hey cruisers, welcome to tonight's live stream. We are talking all about cruise funnies and mishaps. We needed something light and fun and crazy. And so of course, of course, we went to our community and asked them to share their most ridiculous cruise stories with us. And we are going to share them in just a little bit here. Tonight's episode is sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can compare cruise prices with easy to use cruise search. Make sure you set your price alert when you're researching a cruise. There's a little toggle box that says set price alert. You enter your email address. They will email you when the price goes up or down. So you can let your travel agent know if you see any price drops or increases and take it from there. All right, so we're gonna have some fun tonight. Thought about this, thought about it long and hard and we decided we're gonna share our mishaps and funnies first. Then we're going to share the top five or ten that our subscribers shared with us. And then we're going to open it up to a free-for-all for all of you. So I know some of these aren't super funny, but they are real. And so we wanted to tell you some experiences that we've had over the years that we think are definitely story-worthy. The funniest one is going to be at the end, at least in my opinion. And Mr. Cruise Tips TV took it upon himself. After we were talking about this over the weekend, he actually went and found photos that either show the mishap or sort of accompany what was going on around the time of the mishap. So the first one was just a dumb mistake on our part. And it was after you guys may remember that we had this huge buildup to going carry on only for our cruise to the Panama Canal last year. So we we're all excited to do carry on only because we wanted to slide our luggage in the overhead bin. We didn't want to check our bags. We wanted to be light and, and free, right, when we got into the port. So we get to the airport and we don't fly very much. You might need to know that about us, that since we've had our son, we've really cut back on traveling. And that's actually how we got into cruising is because of all the great home ports near us. So we don't fly very much. So we're a little out of touch with how flying works. So we're at the airport, and this is the part where you guys can all cringe because you know better than I do what's about to happen. And they're like, oh, well, if you'd like, we can just gate check those bags for you. We're at the terminal. We're ready to get on the plane, right, honey? We can just gate check those. Well, as we remembered it, gate checking meant that they give them to you right when you get off the plane, not sending them to the baggage carousel. So we're like, yeah, great. Don't have to deal with them, but you'll just hand them right back to us because we live in a small town and we normally fly out of a small regional airport and that's how they do it. They literally hand your bags back to you before you, you know, right when you get off the plane. Well, we had no idea, gave them our bags and then got off the flight after a six hour flight to Florida and we're like, oh, where's our bags, la la la. And they're like, they're at the baggage carousel, which is exactly why we were going carry on only because we didn't want to go to the stupid baggage claim, right? So lesson learned. And after I told all of you guys about this when we got home, because we totally told you, you guys are like, oh yeah, we knew that. You know, nobody gate checks like that anymore. We're like, oh great. Okay, so we're not very savvy travelers. So that's our, that's our first mishap. Second mishap tonight is a little bit more of a crazy story. So we um, broke with tradition and we went on a cruise to the Mexican Riviera to Cabo San Lucas in August, which is actually kind of the rainy, stormy, hot, crazy, volatile weather season in that area of Mexico. We did our normal routine and we took a water taxi to Medano Beach. Well, we're in the water, we're swimming, we're having a great time and suddenly it becomes very, very cloudy and the sky just sort of looks black over on, on the north side of the beach. But on the other side, it's sunny, so we're like, you know, it's cool, we're just swimming, this is crazy, maybe there's a storm coming, that's common in the afternoon, no big deal. Well, it starts getting a lot more black, literally, the sky's getting black, and we're like, okay, we have our child with us in the water, thunder strike risk is a little higher when, you know, you're in the water, let's get our kid out of the water. So... The rain, literally at that moment when we made the judgment call, starts to just pour down like sheets of rain. And everyone ran for shelter. Well, you're, we're on a beach with like very rustic restaurants and things like that. So we rushed out of the water. And in the process, my husband didn't know this until way later. His sunglasses flew off of his head and into the water. And we actually, when we looked back and reviewed the footage, we 
found the, the moment when his sunglasses were flying off of his head. These are his brand new, beautiful, white Maui gyms that he really loved. And so anyway, that's happening. We didn't even know that was happening. That's just a side effect of the whole event. Did you get to show him that photo, sweetie? Okay, great. So the sheets of water are coming down. We're talking like water is pouring down these crazy stairs and every the water taxis are just gone. They've all vanished. There's no water taxis and we have a water taxi scheduled and we have a little child, four, maybe five. So we grab our son and we try to do our best to grab our bag, which is now they've removed all the umbrellas because the wind picked up so much that the umbrellas were being whipped up against the building. So they had to take the umbrellas down. So our beach bag or our backpack was sitting out in the rain, grabbed it, and we literally ran for shelter in one of the covered restaurants area under a dining room table. And our son was visibly scared. He's a very, very good traveler. Nothing really shakes him up. He was trembling from like fear and cold. And I just literally held him underneath the table. The storm did not last more than maybe 30 minutes. Everyone was still and quiet. And it was this eerie, weird kind of calm that I can't really describe. The weird thing is, is that all the water taxis were gone. So we were really worried that we weren't gonna be able to get back. But just as quick as the storm came, it left and the sun literally came out. Everything was soaking wet and people just sort of, kind of went about their business. But ultimately we got a water taxi back. That was crazy. So that's one of the memories that we sort of hold on to. All right, memory number three is another mishap. And this is from a cruise that we went on to Canada and New England in, it was 2006, it was before we had our son. And we were so excited about this cruise because we had found that accidentally good rate on a suite to Canada and New England, which is a great time to have a suite because the views are just spectacular. We got such a good deal, you know, it was pre-child, we're just, you know, the corporate career people who really needed a break and took a week off. So we're in our suite and I wake up like in the middle of the cruise and I put my foot down on the carpet in the morning when I'm getting up to go to the restroom and the carpet is soaking wet. We're talking like it made that sound like squish when you put your foot down on the carpet and we're like oh. Oh my gosh, so the whole entire like 10 foot patch of carpeting on my side of the bed, there was there had been a flood. There had been like a plumbing leak. And so we're like, okay, let's just call the concierge because when you're in the suites, which we'd never go in now because they're too expensive, um, they take care of everything for you. They're like, oh ma'am, sir, we're gonna have to ask you to leave the cabin. We have to air it out. So they had us leave the cabin. They sprung into action. They brought fans in and we kind of were ousted from our cabin for hours, but it was fine. They were so sweet and kind to us. And um, they, they gave us like a probably a $200 stateroom credit and a nice letter from the hotel director and they did their best, but it was crazy. I think it was one of those things that just happens so fast you don't even have time to think about it, but the way that the staff handled it, it was funny. It almost, the cruise almost is a sweeter memory because of how endearing the staff were and how they fell all over themselves and how apologetic they were. Obviously you can't control a plumbing leak. It happens at work, it happens at home. So that was kind of crazy. Okay, number four funny story is a total Sherry story. So we're on Norwegian Star or Jewel. I cannot remember which one. And one of the things we love about Norwegian ships is that they have bathtubs in their mini suites. You know, I'm a bathtub lover. And so we're, you know, we're on night one of the cruise. So embarkation night. And I'm like so excited to, to pour my son a bath or to prepare him a bath. And so I go into the bathroom and I turn on the hot water and I lean over to adjust the temperature and I just, crash with full force onto the bathtub ledge. So just the lip of the tub onto my upper thigh. I bruised myself so bad, you guys. The bruise on my leg was about this big. And it was right at the beginning of the cruise and it's a tropical cruise. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be in a swimsuit the whole week. This is horrible. Aside from the fact that it was extremely painful, like the kind of painful where no sound comes out, you just like lay on the floor and go, oh. It was a hideous, huge, giant, ugly bruise. 
So we get to Cabo and we're like, okay, we I literally couldn't walk around in a swimsuit. In my opinion, I couldn't because the bruise was so bad. I had to find a cover-up, and my husband helped me to do this, on the beaches of Cabo. I had to find a little cover-up that I could actually wear in the pool. It was so bad, I was worried that people were going to think my husband would like, hit me or something. It was so huge. So we bought this cover up and then I ended up like swimming in the cover up, jumping off of this, these crazy water structures at the El Cid and Mazatlan. But I wore this stupid cover up that now, now I look at it and I'm like, oh, I don't like that cover up because it represents my injury. But it kind of, it soured the cruise a little bit because I really hurt myself on the first night. Just, you know, I slipped. I think I slipped on some water on the floor. So that's our number four. So the number five, I've saved the funniest for last. And hopefully I'm not going on and on for too long here because I know you guys would like to hear our subscribers and share yours. But I think this is the funniest thing that's ever happened in recent history on a cruise. So we're in Cabo San Lucas, we're on a sailing excursion not too long ago, and I don't even know if I've shared this with you guys, I can't remember. Um, and we're in Cabo, but we're in Cabo in April, which is an unusual time for us, and the thing about April is the water's very cold. So we're on our sailing excursion, and they're like, oh, we can't snorkel, it's too windy, so we thought, oh, bummer, we're missing, missing the snorkeling. But the wind died down throughout the day. So after the sailing portion, they said, oh, well, if you guys want to swim or snorkel over here at the rocks, you can do that. Nobody wanted to get in because they, they stuck their foot in the water and they're like, oh, it's freezing. Nobody wants to get in. I'm like, I'm getting in. I booked this excursion because I wanted to get in that beautiful water. And so I'm doing it. I'm not going to snorkel, but I'm going to go for a swim. So everybody's kind of standing at the back of the boat and they're kind of watching me. Not, not totally watching me, but kind of. Their attention is more on me because they know that I'm about to dive or jump into freezing cold water. They were watching you. They were watching yes. me. Yes. Yes. She, Thus, was, she was trying to get the party started and yeah. she was really egging people on to come in and she was trying to set a good example. So they were definitely watching. So then I dove in, which the thumbnail of this image, which you guys saw, that's me diving into the water. I'm like, oh, this is so great. Well, then I flip over onto my back and I'm like lounging and I had lost ye old bikini top on one half of my chest. And so <laughs> my husband's like, I don't, do you remember how you reacted? Were you just like, honey, like, what did you do? I don't remember. I he stopped filming. That was the first he thing. He stopped filming. I stopped filming. And then there was somebody else trying to get your attention, but we all wanted to get you to turn around and yeah. So somehow they got my attention. I was like, ah, la, la. so yeah, that was great. Um, the whole entire, uh, I guess they were probably inebriated, so it really didn't matter. The people on that sailing excursion in Cabo were really into the all-inclusive drink part. So I'm pretty sure they don't remember any of this, but the, uh, <laughs> the staff that this, the captain and the, um, uh, I don't know, his assistant or whomever, they tried to play it off like it was just no big deal. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, turn over. <laughs> and my husband just like, you know, motioning for me. I don't remember any words that were said, but I do remember it was very uncomfortable. But in that moment, I just very quietly kind of like, oh, just, you know, corrected it and like kept swimming because I thought that that was the best way to do it. Don't acknowledge the slip. So anyway, those are our crazy fun mishaps and funnies we thought we would share with you guys tonight. I know I've missed a ton in the chat right now. Honey, I see a lot of questions coming in and a lot of things. Um, we've got a lot of questions coming in, so I'll take a couple and then we'll, we'll get to everybody else's funnies. So give me a few minutes, everyone. I want to hear your funnies, but I want to be able to see them. I'm going to answer a couple of subscriber questions that came in earlier, and I want to tell you about tonight's giveaway. Tonight's giveaway is this beautiful handmade mug that says seize the day. This is gonna to ship to United States and Canada, or Canada, United States or Canada. And this is made by our subscriber, Joe Ellen, who you may have seen before. I don't know if she's here tonight, but um, she is one of our subscribers. And she sent me one of these and I said, hey, can I buy one for you for the giveaway and she agreed to ship to either the US or Canada. So we're gonna open it up later. I'll tell you how to enter a little bit later, but I thought I would share that right now. A couple of questions came in. Consuelo wants to know what's the weather like for the Mexican Riviera early July. It's probably nice. It's probably pretty hot in early July, but there's really no bad time, Consuelo, to go to the Mexican Riviera. 
Flyover Country said, can you talk about the last night of the cruise? Sure, Flyover Country, the last night of the cruise can be kind of a downer, it can be kind of depressing. We've done a lot of videos on how to kind of ease that, um, that discomfort on the last night of the cruise. And so one, one tip I'll share with you is that it's a really good idea to pack early in the day on the last night so that you don't get bummed and plan something special for your last night, like a show or something like that. If you need more information, we can talk about it. Oh, Sydney, this is going to be good. Sydney said, a scary mishap for me was my excursion bus pulled off, pulled off without me after the first stop on our tour. Sydney, how did you reunite with your excursion? Let me know. That is crazy. Oh, my gosh. Yes, Joselle. Mr. CTTD is very sweet and romantic. He was trying everything he could to save me. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. So Jim wants to know what gear was that you got rid of? What are you guys talking about? No, I don't know. Tammy, what's Be, the... Before I jumped in, because I ultimately did get in the water, but obviously she had taken care of the problem. But I was filming. I had regular clothes on, and so I had to, like, quickly put my get... camera away and put the bag away. Oh, and... that kind of gear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Tammy, the weather in Cozumel, Grand Cayman, and Montego Bay in early January is ideal. That's probably some of the best weather, so it's probably going to be warm and nice and pleasant. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, he better stop filming first. So he did stop filming, but he did capture a little bit of it, as you saw, because I know he found a way to black out the evidence. Um, but yeah, he he did have a tiny bit of me rolling over and then went like, <gasps> oh my gosh. Didn't help that I was wearing a white bikini, like all the white skin, because I'm very pale. It all just blended together, I'm quite sure. <laughs> so bad, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no, Judy left her shoes at home on her first day and only had her flip-flops all week. <laughs> oh no. Oh my gosh, Natasha, you broke your toe. That's not good. Oh man. Seth, does what come with a group cruise? You're so funny. You guys, I don't know. These are good stories. I can't wait to see more of them. So I'm going to read just a few of our subscribers' top stories from today. I'm only going to read five of them. But if you want some good laughs, go to Facebook and look at the post where you see a little picture of my son as a baby in his tuxedo holding open a bathroom door. I thought it was just a funny picture of him as a baby. That's the one where people listed all their funnies. Or you can see it on the community tab. Same picture. My, my son is a baby holding open the bathroom door with his little vest and his formal night clothes. There's funny stories in there, but I'm going to read a couple and then we're going to go into the chat for the whole time. Um, Karen Wise, I think that's how she says her name, on Facebook has a really funny one. And um, she said, I like to play jokes on my husband and I knew he was getting out of the shower and I, and I thought, he thought I was taking a walk around the ship, so I quietly left the room. And when I figured he'd be naked in the middle of the cabin, I knocked on the door in a funny voice and said, housekeeping, and was letting myself in. I could hear my husband getting flustered that what he assumed was the stateroom attendant was walking in. When he saw it was me, we had a good laugh. A few days later, I was in the shower and my husband went for coffee. I heard the knock at the door and it said housekeeping. So being the nut I am, I did a little pose in the nude. My surprise when it was in fact our stateroom attendant and not my husband, he was delivering chocolate covered strawberries. Not sure why the do not disturb sign was not on the door. That's a funny one, Karen. I gotta hand it to you on that. Okay, this one is crazy from Shannon. This is like uncomfortable funny, but you have to hear this one. Shannon said, one of her past cruises, she got up to use the restroom during, um, during dinner. She returned to the table, sat down to see. Her meal had arrived and she was so excited for some pasta. She started eating and then looked up to see a stranger staring back at her. She was at the wrong table. The back of the guy's head looked just like my boyfriend's head. Crazy thing was that the woman whose seat I had ordered, this, she had ordered the same entree as me. My boyfriend was two tables away and turned around when he heard the commotion that I had caused. This is our first night in the dining room. <laughs> you guys, that's so embarrassing. Poor Shannon. Okay, wait till you hear what Justine said happened to her husband, Andrew. Justine said that at the Quest show, this is an extremely adult focused game show on carnival that you actually when you go to the quest they tell you if you're offended by anything you need to leave it is hardcore she said that her husband had to take off his pants in the game show this is normal for the game show quest guys and be in his underwear lo and behold they were the underwear that were missing a button at the front so he ended up rearranging his underwear sideways that's really funny you guys see a theme here it's like nudity and missing clothing 
Okay, so Millie has a similar experience. Millie said several years ago when she was in Carnival Freedom with her husband, they decided to sit on their balcony and they were really tired, so they fell asleep naked. When they woke up, their cabin had been completely made up, which means that they assumed that their cabin steward had seen them in the nude. Lots of, lots of nudity in this particular live stream. I guess we're not so family friendly today. Okay, Mark, this is funny. I think this is just cute. Mark said, Mark W said, we got too fat for our formal clothes by the time the second formal night came around because of the buffets and margaritas. They literally couldn't fit into their buffet clothes. I think that's really funny. This is a really cute one from Becky S. Becky said on her first cruise with mom and daughter on Regal Princess, her mom was in a wheelchair and she put her mom in the main plaza court with girls playing the harp. She told her she'd be back in 15 minutes to the piazza, and then she got back and grandma was gone. She had to go to the front desk and report her missing. The front desk said, you lost your child already? And I said, no, my 87-year-old grandma in a wheelchair. And they said, what? Anyway, granny had made it all the way up to, you guessed it, the casino, and was playing away at the slot machines. She didn't care that it took Becky and her family hours to find her. I think that's really funny. I get a kick out of that. Oh my gosh. Lynn Hunter said that on their um, first cruise, they had a fire in the engine room and they actually put people in emergency lifeboats and they were in their pajamas. That sounds really scary and gnarly. Nancy said that for her first cruise, um, her husband dropped her and her kids off with the luggage and went to park four blocks away. They thought, no problem, we'll meet him inside the cruise terminal. Well, then when he came back, he didn't have his boarding pass, so he wasn't able to get into the terminal through the scanners, so um, he was stuck outside. So she had to hand deliver his paperwork to him, go through all the lines all over again. Rookie mistake, that's a good one, Nancy. That's a really practical one. Um, Oh my goodness, I have so many of them, but we really don't have time to read them all tonight. I, I just wanna thank everybody though for submitting so many funnies to us and you guys definitely need to go check it out. Okay, all right, so Steven wants to know if Norwegian is a good choice. You've been on Royal Caribbean twice, you have two kids, probably Steven. Yeah, I think Norwegian would be a really good comparable type cruise, lots of activities. Go with one of the newer ships, try Bliss when it comes over. Um, LM Edit said, now I'm back to the funnies. A seagull flew into my son and broke his nose. Really ruined the week since then he will never go on a cruise. Oh my gosh. LM Edits, that happened to my brother. He got hit by a low flying duck while he was riding his bike and he jumped off of a ramp and he got hit by a low flying duck and had an injury to his face. Um, Melissa, weather in November in Cabo is primo. Very good and I think you can see whales. November is one of my favorite times to go to Cabo for that reason. Okay, let's see. Thank you, Desi. I'm glad you're enjoying it. This is, I'm so glad you're having fun. Okay, I see that, let's see here. Oh yeah, Judy drove all the way to port and left her shoes, her entire bag of shoes at home and only had flip-flops the whole week. Yeah, that's, that's brutal. At least you had your comfy shoes though, right, hon? Right, Judy? Let's see, what do we have here? Oh my gosh. More funny ones. Oh no. Lego Irish Step Crazy said, our balcony was ninth floor aft and the, and the seventh floor below had half of their balcony visible. I watched a guy in his formal pants only checking out his muscles. I'm gonna go ahead and say Lego Irish Step Crazy, I've seen worse. I'm gonna compete with you right now. Because on our last cruise on MSC, I looked down, the cabins beneath us were totally exposed and this woman walked out on her balcony with a shirt and no pants, none. I was like, <gasps> and I like backed up because I felt guilty. She was like walking out there and she was putting, she had a shirt on, but no pants. She's putting her kids laundry for like five minutes with no pants. And I'm like, I would like to come back on my balcony now. You're ruining it for me because I feel like I'm violating your privacy. It was really funny. Oh no. Bialair said on their honeymoon, we overdid it with a tequila on a catamaran excursion. You were fine while dancing on the ocean, but as soon as you touch your feet on the concrete, you fell smack on your butt. Yeah, I could see how that would happen. Oh, you guys. Okay, I'll scroll up, Vanessa. I'm gonna scroll up for a while. Oh, see, it's going so fast, it's really hard for me to find them. Mr. Crucifix TV, can you do me a favor? Can you put some funnies in on the screen for me so I can read them? Okay, Victoria. Um... 
Oh no, Victoria said you were on Carnival, it was 10 p.m., you went to get pizza and there was a guy at the first table in front of the pizza place and the guy was knocked out sitting up with an empty plate on the table. That sounds about right. A lot of people go get that pizza for a reason because they need to soak it up, right? Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness sakes, that's a nice story, Lindsay, that someone saved you with your locker money. Oh my goodness, this is funny. Amy said, just got off the Valor three weeks ago. Hubby put on someone's flip-flops coming out of the pool. Too many spirits. It was his birthday. Neither one of us noticed until five hours later. Oh no, Amy. We can only hope that that person got his flip-flops, right? Oh my dear. Sharon forgot her swimsuit and had to pay $60 for one in Bermuda. Oh no, Juanita got Montezuma's revenge on formal night. Oh no. You were wearing a long, tight-fitting ball gown, girdle, and hose. Oh, Juanita, thanks for sharing that. That's so sad. Oh, my goodness. Desi said, first mishap that happened with me was when we were flying in same day, but my sister left her passport as we were driving at 4 a.m. 15 minutes to the airport, 20 minutes back to her house. I hope you made it, Desi. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Holly said, on Carnival Sunshine, head waiter made a, ba a bow out of a napkin for my husband's head and gave him a napkin bib. The waiter then proceeded to feed my husband the vegetables off his plate. Oh, that's funny. I'm sure your husband loved that. Um, I got the tequila one, sweetie. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh, gate girl. That, your poor mom with the stitches. That's awful. Oh, no, Nancy, you left all your bras at home. Oh, my goodness sakes. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, let's see here. Steve said, funny moment, when we were in Nassau on November 4th, 2016, two days after the Cubs won the World Series, the tour guide in Nassau noticed my Cubs cap and instantly congratulated me on the Cubs winning. That's cool. Um, let's see. Oh, no. Trisha said her husband was recognized as that drunk guy in the elevator the last night, and you felt sorry. We felt sorry for your wife. That's really cute. Um, oh yeah, Sydney. I, I heard about Sydney earlier. Sydney's bus left without him and you said luckily another bus from the same company pulled up 20 minutes later, took you to the next stop and you met back up. Thank goodness, that could have gone bad. Okay, Diane said, got off on the wrong floor, got lost and was wandering around looking for my room. Someone called security and said I looked suspicious and confused. Oh my God, Diane, how embarrassing. That's horrible. Aww. Oh my goodness. Okay, what is this from Isabel? Husband was flicking a light switch. Switch. I had no idea was behind the bed, and he had me believing the ship was having an electrical malfunction. I had a mild panic attack. We still left. That's cute. So funny. Yeah, mellow bulldog. I did not swim back to the ship. I just kept my pride intact. I grew up with three brothers. I've been through everything. You can, you can imagine, right? Like everything. <laughs> Yeah, shorty. I kept the cover up, but I hate it. I look at it in my closet and I'm like, you need to give that thing away. It's weird how something can be symbolized, symbolized that way. Okay. I'm just going to take a moment to scroll here for a minute. Um, yeah, flyover country. Can you ask for New England, Canada tips, best cruise line ship? What does everybody think? Who's been to Canada, New England on a cruise? And tell us your best cruise line and ship. A flyover country, I definitely recommend to you um, Holland America. We had a wonderful time on Mazdam in Canada, New England. Those small ships on HAL are beautiful. That's my recommendation to you. But let's go ahead and leave some for flyover country. Um... Aw, poor gate girl. You have a trip and fall on every cruise. You've done, you did a flip in the main dining room, hawking over two chairs, but everyone turned and looked. Oh no, my goodness sakes, we're gonna have to work on that. Um, I don't know, Melissa, what to order at Cabo Wabo. I think the cocktails are probably great. I would focus on tequila, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I, haven't, I don't spend a lot of time at Cabo Wabo, but it sounds really fun. <laughs> Oh no, Elise got her thumb slammed in the balcony door. I need some good ones here, Mr. Chris Tibbs TV. Give me, some, give me some good solid funnies. These are all good though, you guys. Please know that I love them all. Linda said, went back to my cabin late at night. Hubby went to the casino. I realized I couldn't undo my dress by myself. I had to go out in the hallway and find somebody to help. That's really cute. I like that. So funny. Ooh, Joe Ellen, what happened? On my first cruise, I was walking above the pool after dark, and I got to see a topless woman sitting on top of a guy. They didn't care that there was an audience. I left coolly. Ew, gross. That's awful. Yeah, ew. I don't know, man. I think some people 
take their balcony privacy a little too seriously or not seriously enough. Oh, this is really cute. Sarah said, got a fish pedicure in Costa Maya. I'm an extreme introvert and ended up with a crowd of people filming me and my feet. They tried to converse with me in Spanish, but I didn't understand a word. Sarah, that sounds like a nightmare. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, no fun at all. Amy, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Um, let's see here. Ooh, wow, John. John sailed through that bomb cyclone. Oh, I cannot believe it. 80 foot waves and the ship was listing 10 degrees. Rebecca wants to know, guys, what's a great ship for Western Caribbean? Let's help Rebecca with a great ship for Western Caribbean. Um, Jenner said, I was scuba diving and my mask was too tight. It felt like my eye was going to pop out. I had bruises on my face and my eye was red and bloodshot. Second day of a seven night, seven night cruise. Had to look to the side and all the pictures. Yeah, Jenner's, that can happen. That suction can be crazy. I've had that happen scuba diving before where I just really felt like I got messed up. Okay. JC Morales, coming from dinner, I hear, incoming! We turned back and this guy was carrying boxes of food and he must have slipped. Once he fell, his robe came off and he was just in a Speedo. We helped him clean up his mess. <laughs> That's really sweet. Oh, gross! Renee said their neighbor did y naked yoga and her reflection was in the glass. Oh, gosh! So gross! Oh no, Tanise shared a cabin with another married couple on our first cruise together. They were in a fight the whole time. It was super awkward. That is horrible. That is horrible. Absolutely horrible. Yeah, Sydney, we're rated PG-13 today, right? This might be our first ever PG-13 live stream. We're usually pretty family friendly. Um, oh my goodness sakes, that is really funny, Bessie. The, during the mustard drill, we were, we were standing there waiting for everyone to get there. A pigeon flew over and landed on the railing, looking at us like, what are those humans doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh no. Jim and Annette said, go to change into our thongs to go to the pool. And they said they didn't want to hear about our underwear. We said, no, our thongs are flip-flops, like our shoes. I know thong now has a different meaning. When I was growing up, you definitely called them thongs. I don't think we called them flip-flops. I get it. Cece said, didn't wear ties. Our formal night stopped a guy in uniform for help. Turns out it was the captain. He asked to help tie his tie. I wondered why a crowd gathered. Oh, that's really cute. Oh, no, Desi forgot all of her underwear in the car. That's bad. That's bad because underwear are not something you want to have to buy because usually you want to wash the underwear before you wear them. At least I think so. I mean, okay. Oh yeah, Alice. I keep hearing a lot about this, Alice. Alice said in her first cruise in, on, in 1989, got the patch for seasickness and couldn't read the menus, nor was I conscious much and I didn't drink then at all, just drugged by the patch. A lot of people get really sleepy from the patch. Anna said, my brother and his friend once carried a whoopee cushion in their suit jackets on formal nights. They rode the elevators and squeezed them when they were full. Oh, that's horrible. Okay, what is this from John? John was snorkeling in Belize. A guy looked at my feet and said, those are flippers. Was the only one in our group who did not get flippers. I wear a size 13 S. Aw, oh, John, your feet are flippers, huh? Is that what he meant? Oh, that's really cute. Oh, no. Oh no, George said, left my room with a key around my neck, wind from the open door slammed behind me. Me on one side of the door in the hallway and the key still attached to my lanyard on the other. Ouch, that's brutal. That is no fun. Oh man, these are good ones, guys. James, yeah, Carnival Miracle is a great ship. It's an older ship. It needs a renovation. In my opinion, it's time to get a little, it needs a little love, but it's a really fun ship. It has a lot of character. Really great. <laughs> Wait, okay, so Rebecca wants to travel more and Nurse Nancy want Grandma Sherry to come back. Oh, do ya? So this is the thing though. I, I mean, I liked Grandma Sherry. That was a really funny episode, but I don't even know how I did that. I just, it was like an out of body experience. I, I think when we spray painted my hair gray that this thing just came over me, but then we were kind of joking that I sounded like Sarah Palin. Like if you go back and watch it, if you don't think I sound like Sarah Palin, I would be shocked. I really like channeled that voice. So <laughs> I think it's really funny, but why don't you guys tell me what topic you would like to me to cover as Grandma Sherry, and I will see if I can maybe muster it up again sometime. I'd be willing. Maybe we'll just like I don't know. We'll have to figure something out. It was actually Instagrammy, remember? Instagrammy. 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 Yeah, Instagrammy. 
your your face your facebook your your what was it again your 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 face page your instagrammy your instagram i remember the script just a little bit but I, I need to go back that was definitely a scripted episode we wrote a funny script because we thought i you know i couldn't just ad lib that whole thing but it was pretty funny <laughs> mike and cheryl you can see russia from the backyard i know right totally so funny oh linda wants sherry talking about the group cruise that will be funny Ella wants a link to Instagrammy in the comments. Do you think you could do that? Um, it was b better sleep on a cruise. I was talking about, I was preaching, don't drink too much, go to bed early, right? All that stuff. Oh, Sydney said formal night as Grandma Sherry. That's a good idea. That actually could be a good tie-in, Sid. Wayne, thank you so much. I'm really glad to hear that. Wayne, tell us where your next cruise is. We'd love to hear. Oh my goodness, yeah, Michelle, no broken foot next time, right? Okay, you guys want to talk about um, you want to talk about the giveaway? Let me give Mr. Cruise TV a minute to put that link in there for Ella, because if not, the chat will move too fast. Just as a reminder, this mug can be mailed to the United States or Canada. So to enter tonight, you are going to enter the country you live in just so I can confirm that that's where we can ship to. And then all I want is one word describing how cruising makes you feel. So it will be like USA comma awesome or USA comma euphoric or whatever. So you guys can go ahead and do that right now because I think Mr. Cruise Tips TV is going to get that link in there. Let's see who's the first to comment. Oh, Instagram is in the house. Thank you for linking to that. Great. Everybody's going to see that. It's actually a pretty funny episode. <laughs> Can I smell what Seth is cooking? I must be missing something. This is the great thing about the live chat replay. I can always go back and watch it and find all of the mischief that you guys are up to. I'm telling you. You think tequila was involved, Seth? Oh, no. What happened? You found the cruise director. Chris said, roaming the net last night, you found the cruise director list for Carnival. Ooh, cool. Oh, I love all these words. So this is how everybody feels about cruising. Happy, free, calm, excited, relaxed, uninhibited, wonderful, excited, alive. Um, let's see here. Happy, happy, relaxed, serene, ecstatic, Jim says. Yeah, ecstatic. That's how I feel. I feel ecstatic on embarkation day. I feel ecstatic at sail away. That's really good. Um, amazing, says Shanice. Chrissy said, nervous. Chrissy, I feel nervous too, and I've been on lots of cruises. I still get nervous before every cruise. Totally nervous. Sometimes I'd say I'm even stressed out. Magical, pampered, excited, incredible, giddy. Oh, I like that one. Rested, says DLUSA. Excited, says Mellow Bulldog. These are really good, you guys. Contented. Now, Wicked Wonder, I would have to tell you that I think content is one of my favorite words because I love the word content. I like it so much more than I like the word happy because I think that people like, I think people strive to be happy when they should just strive to be content. Is that a weird thing to say? I feel like an English teacher in high school maybe said something to me like that one time and I just think that's so beautiful because life is full of so many ups and downs and contentedness is just so much more reasonable than to always have to force yourself to feel happy, right? So whoever said content, I think that's beautiful. I love that. All right, I'm gonna see some more of these. We're gonna spend just a few more minutes. Um, Yaniri King said, how's the weather for a seven night Eastern Caribbean cruise in October? The weather should be good, it depends. October is, is a bit of a tricky month because you're still definitely in hurricane season as we have seen this month. Unfortunately, it's still really risky, but the weather itself should be good as long as there's no storms brewing. So book at your own risk, I would say. All right, Jim um, and another of our subscribers today notified me that Princess has moved their dining times back 30 minutes to one hour today with no notice. I wanna tell you who else let me know about this because it's really important. If any of you are sailing on Princess, it's a pretty big change and I wanna just let you know who the other subscriber was that let me know about this. I'm looking through my email. 
I think that it was Renee. So subscriber Renee had mentioned that this is a big thing, you guys. Some people's dining, set dining times for early dining has been moved to as early as 5 p.m. on Princess. So if you're sailing with Princess and you have booked set time dining, your dining time may have changed. You should be aware of that and talk to your travel agent. All right. All right, we have 30 more seconds until the giveaway is over. All right, and again, this is USA and Canada. Um, Tanise, you're worried about the ports for December. You're worried they're all destroyed. Oh no, that's really sad. Mike and Cheryl, you weren't happy about the dining time. I know, what are you gonna do, Mike and Cheryl? Are you gonna switch to anytime dining? What will you do? I think five o'clock is way too early. I would not be okay with that. I would have to switch. I would honestly switch. Ooh, Angela said she bliss. Very good. Yeah, Stacy, content over happy any day. Michelle, thank you. I like this shirt a lot too. It's really, 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 really old. Um, Seth, what did you do? Why are you not apologizing for something? I'm just worried about that right now. What have you done? <laughs> you guys, so many great adjectives and descriptive words. Oh, blessed, giddy. Okay, Tammy wants to know, is any time dining um, or later dining better on Carnival Dream? Tammy, that's really up to you. I'm a late dining girl. I've changed. I've changed to a late dining girl. That's my personal opinion. All right, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, let me know when you've had time to finish it up. Okie dokie, Chokies, we have a winner. And tonight's winner of the Seize the Day mug is Megan. Leaf Ewing from Canada. Congratulations, Megan. Megan's been with us for a very long time. I'll have Joellen ship that to you, Megan. Please email me your physical address in Canada um, at sherry, S-H-E-R-I, at cruisetipstv.com. Don't leave your address in the chat. You guys have heard me say it over and over. Congratulations, excited for you. It's a really beautiful mug. If you wanna see a little bit closer. Very pretty, insulated, nice little hole you can drink out of here. You can do warm or cold in this, but I believe you're not supposed to put it in the dishwasher. So hand wash it. All right. Larissa, there is no group cruise. It's not happening yet. We have a goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers. And once we get to 100,000 subscribers, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. We'll start the process. Okay. You guys always stirring up the group cruise thing here. All right, oh good, Mike and Cheryl. So Princess Cruises said you could show up 15 minutes later, so 7.30 p.m. you're fine. You didn't like the no notice option. Yeah, I, I don't understand why they did that. I guess it's probably because they felt that the second dining time was too late for a lot of those people. I just don't know. I know, right, Jim? You have to go from tea time to dinner directly if at five. No, I know, because tea is 3.30 to 4.30. That's unacceptable. I'm not okay with that either. I want my dinner to be a little bit later. All right. Um, yes, Jamie, we have thought about having a list of travel agents that we feel um, comfortable recommending. It is on our um, to-do list for the next year to build out a section of our website where we do have travel agent recommendations. However, it has just been, so, there's so many projects on our plate, including just normal life and full-time jobs, right? So it's definitely on my list. I did ask for people, travel agents, to email me their contact information a few months ago, and I'm holding on to that in the event that we do build that out on our website, and I, I would like to do that. I'm sorry that we haven't had time to do it yet. It really has been just a lack of bandwidth for us. Okay, I know, Alexander, I know. All right, Desi, you need to send me a picture of your cruise nerd shirt. Wayne wants to know if anybody knows when Royal Caribbean is implementing their price increase on the drink package. Cece, welcome. Glad to have you here today. Okay, let's see. I don't know the answer about the drink package. Wayne, if we aren't able to answer that question for you, please go ask over in the forums at royalcaribbeanblog.com. They will help you for sure. All right, everybody, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up tonight. I hope that everybody has had a good time. Tomorrow night, we're coming back and we're gonna do another episode on gifts. This time, we're gonna go into more specific detail. 6 p.m. Pacific time, we're gonna do gifts for him, gifts for her, and gifts for kids and teens because we thought that the episode was very, very busy and well-received earlier in the week and that we wanted to kind of go into a little bit more detail about 
specific and slightly more kind of fun novelty items instead of just the real practical items that we discussed. So come join us, everybody. We really appreciate all of you. As always, I know that I can guarantee I've missed some questions tonight. If I have missed you, the best way to reach me is through direct message on Facebook. I also wanna thank all of you who have joined the Cruise Tips TV Academy this week. We had asked for 100 founding members and we have now nearly 300. If you're not familiar with the Academy and you wanna learn more about it, there's a link in the description and we'd love to welcome you all to join. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you tomorrow night, six o'clock Pacific, same time, same place. Until then, we'll see you on the high seas. Hey, click me to subscribe.